It's so stupid, it's positively brilliant. Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots, and this week's show is brought to you by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. There are no hidden fees or price hikes, and all websites are optimized for mobile. And it's so simple. Start with a design template and use drag and drop tools to make it your own. You can go to squarespace.com right now. Use our code slash idiot for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code idiot to save 10% off your first purchase. Now let's start the show. Let's get right to it. Shoti, what did you see this week that made you say positively brilliant? What did you see this week that made you say what a fucking idiot? Positively brilliant. Now let's start with what a fucking idiot. What a fucking idiot okay. I was to think that Bill Belichick had anything to do with the Patriots success. What an absolute fucking idiot I must have been. <laughs> To think that he was anything more than a babysitter for the greatest football player. And arguably, some might say, I won't go there yet, but some might say the greatest athlete in history. Okay? I threw that question out there. I threw that question out there. Is Tom Brady the greatest athlete of all time? I I, I think it's highly debatable. You know, I saw uh, Robin Lundberg. Robin Lundberg was actually talking about Jay-Z because Jay-Z got a new verse coming out this Friday with Nipsey Hussle. Mm. Uh from the soundtrack to uh, Judas and the Black Messiah. And Robin Lundberg said Jay-Z is the greatest rapper of all time. Um, something I forgot how he w worded it, but I, I, I left a comment. And I said, it's not debatable. I said, Tom Brady is the Jay-Z of athletes. Mm -hmm. Notice I didn't say that the other way around, right? And so somebody left a comment and said, you need to stop saying stupid shit like this out loud. Tom Brady looks up to Serena Williams. Now, Serena Williams, absolutely one of the greatest athletes of all time. But I do not understand why people underestimate the degree of difficulty of American football and the degree of violence Hold of on. American football. Serena is not one of the greatest athletes of all time. She's probably not even top 20,000. She's oh, the up. greatest female athlete of all time, but she's not one of the greatest athletes of all time because if she played soccer she's admitted this she's like if i played uh tennis with guys i wouldn't even come close to winning so if we're just talking about completely neutral you remove sex from all these things you're not going to put serena in a category with jordan tom brady and these guys I've i mean I've, I've never heard her say that um i don't know the degree of difficulty of tennis i don't play tennis it does it's, it looks athletic it looks like you have to have some speed and some female hand -eye coordination female athlete absolutely Hundred percent. I think Serena will bust a men's ass and nah. play tennis. Nah, nah. I don't know, bro. I don't know. I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't know how. I don't know the degree of difficulty of tennis. I don't watch it enough. But I, I, I I'm not gonna discredit her and say she's not hey. top twenty thousand. Hey, you know. Hey, time. you wanna know something? What? Neither do I. I'll discredit her. How <laughs> <laughs> not difficult that shit is, bro. But I discredit her. Hey, you know what I mean? Come I, on I, out. I, 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 I can tell you what I can say with the utmost confidence. What's that? Male or female. Tennis ain't as violent as football. Not even close. You know what I'm saying? Not even close. That's, that, that's, all, that's all I'm saying. The degree of difficulty of football and the violence of football mm -hmm. is what makes me say, man, I don't see how Tom Brady's not the greatest athlete of, 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 of all time. Or maybe we should say team sport to make it. That's the equal. other thing. If you go into individual sports, it's tricky because in individual sports, the greatest athlete of all time is probably Usain Bolt because. If you really want to look at competing, right? Everybody in the world, not everybody has picked up a basketball. Not everybody has picked up a football. I grew up going to public school in New York City. There was no outlet for me to play football. We didn't have football teams. We didn't have a football uh, stadium or any of that. We didn't have a football field, right? We used to rent out our basketball court that we used mm -hmm. to have. So not everybody has access to football. Michael Phelps, some people might say, oh, he's the greatest athlete all the time. He's like, yeah, the greatest athlete of all time that could take swimming classes. A lot of people can't afford to take swimming classes. 
<laughs> right? It, you have to be wealthy for swimming to even be a hobby. Or you have to live near water. Usain Bolt, everybody on this planet has run 100 meters straight. Every single person. So he is truly the fastest human being ever because we know who's running fast. Yeah, but he not getting tackled. Ain't nobody running after him. That's my, I guess the, it's the degree of violence in football makes it different. This is the not for long. All right, then. All this right, is, then. Is, what about boxing? I mean, for me, if it's not him, it's Floyd. Floyd, to me, is the greatest great of all time. Boxing is up there. I'm not going to lie. Box, boxing is up there. It's an individual sport. It's violent as fuck. You know, um, I actually, it, and I, I, res, no disres, no, I respect Floyd. What Floyd has done is incredible. If I had to give it to a boxer, I, w I would have to give it to Ali. Only because the heavyweight division is violent as fuck. I'd have to give it to Ali. And when you look at Ali and how fast he is, his defense was second to none. He had power. He would bang with you. It got to a point where Floyd wasn't doing much banging. He was, he was, he was, he was winning uh, fights with his defense. Yep, that's true. But he dominated. He dominated. He dominated. He dominated. Oh, been hit a handful of times. We're talking about the hardest sport to be dominant as you get older. I mean, you look at Ali. God bless his soul. As he got older and he started to slow down, Ali was getting pieced up. But Ali, Ali took three years off. Came back. So did Floyd. Wasn't was, Floyd locked up? I don't remember. Yeah, yeah, he did get locked up for a second. He did. Yeah. Okay, so why not George Flo George Foreman then? What about? Because I factor age into this shit, bro. I got you have to factor age, especially in boxing and football. Yeah. We're talking about 40. We're talking about a 43 year old man, bro. Yo, the most woozy I ever seen Tom Brady Yo, say was it. today say, when he was walking out that goddamn bar. Yeah. Say <laughs> <laughs> Drunk off the kill. Say That's what the you, most. Say huh? what you really want to say, bro. He's a what? forty-three year old white man, bro. I didn't even think about that. I don't get race. Don't got nothing to do with that. Oh no, it does. We don't age that no. great, bro. We don't I've age never, that great. There's not a. I've never seen a forty-something year old athlete be that dominant, regardless of what race they are. What about Lisa Ann? I don't even know who that is. Porn star. Man, shut up. They're athletes. <laughs> That's not athletic, bro. That's not physical ability. You want to talk about violence, bro? Taking them big old things? Taking them big old things, bro? I got to see how much anal she takes. It's all A about lot. the anal. A lot. Really? She's been taking big old things. Hey, I will say I do have a different respect for porn stars that do double penetration. When you watching bro. Pornhub and you watching women take it in the vagina and, and the, butt. the anus. Lord have mercy. I respect not the even, men. Not even flinching. Bro, I take a I take a shit and be ready to pass out. Yeah. <laughs> so imagine something going in. Like, God yeah. damn. So sometimes Bro, I had a, go, the go. times I had colonics, I wanted to freaking cry. Really? Oh, colonics ain't no joke. When colonics they shoot the no water joke. up in there? Colonics ain't no joke. Yeah, absolutely. That's why, that's why, that's why I hate when people you know, disrespect me and, and say I'm gay, but I would, I'm a bottom. Like, no, don't disrespect bottoms like that. I don't, I don't have that kind of strength. You would okay. be a top if you were gay? Absolutely. I couldn't take it in that. No way, Jose. Is that gay, though, if you're a top? I don't know if that's gay. Gay-ish? Yeah, you're gay-ish. <laughs> you got to take at least one dick if you want me to give you full gay, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? If you're a top, you're just LGBTQ. <laughs> it's, like <I> <laughs> <that. laughs> it's like, I respect you, but eh, come on, bro. You, know <laughs> you play pro in China, bro. You ain't really play pro ball. <laughs> You're not really in the league. Let's be honest, right? You're not right really here. in the league. Imagine bro. you took dicks and then there's some guy walking around talking about, yeah, I'm gay. I'm gay too. And he's like, nah, I've never taken a dick. Get the fuck out of here, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm going to be, I, I do, I respect bottoms way more than tops. Like, if you're going to do it, do it. God damn it. Yeah, you got to okay. go for it, bro. I don't even think they should be able to go to the parade. Listen, <laughs> Yo, I'll be, they got to they gotta spec 
spectate like the rest of us. They got to sit on the <laughs> sidelines like the rest of us and then <laughs> give no. high praise to the real gays. So that's a good fucking point. Salute to all the bottoms, man. That's and I love I'm bottoms. Saying. I love bottoms that are proud to be bottoms. That's pride, bro. Yes. You know You're what I'm taking saying? it, bro. You know what Fuck I mean? You top. are taking it. You know what Fuck it is? It's top. like, if it's like if you're like a cook in the military, like you're in the military, you know, but kind of, you know what I'm saying? Be a man, bro. Be a man. <laughs> be a man and be a fucking bottom. Yeah. All right. Take that dick. Take some shaft, you pussy. I, I will say this, though. Um, I, You know, it's going to be debatable whether Tom Brady is the greatest athlete ever. I, I don't I don't I really don't see it. Why it's that much of a debate? Like some of these people, folks are naming. I'm like, stop! All right, stop. What do you mean? If you get on, a, if you get on a fucking football field, let this is all I tell you. Let Aaron Donald. Let I want any 43 year old man to get on the fucking football field and let Aaron Donald sack them, and then you tell me what kind of respect you got for Tom, man enough to be a bottom Brady. There you go. There you go. Matter of fact, Aaron Donald sack you. You have a whole new respect for bottoms. That's a fact. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they dealing with that on a daily where you, basis. Where, where do you rank Tom Brady as far as white men? I got him number one all time. You have him number one all time in history? Number one all time. Number one all time. We, we did a poll on the Breakfast Club the other day. Our yeah. white listeners were calling in. From our poll, the top five white men of all time, Tom Brady, Abraham Lincoln, the Undertaker, Christopher Columbus, and Keanu Reeves. I'm serious. <laughs> how the, how the fuck? Hold on. Hold on, hold on. It goes Undertaker, then who? Christopher it was, Columbus? It was Tom Brady. How did Christopher it, Columbus get in there? I have no, somebody, the people will call it like you're Christopher Columbus. Tom Brady, Christopher Columbus, Abraham Lincoln. Keanu Reeves and The Undertaker. Y'all just think Christopher Columbus is dope because he didn't discover y'all. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> if he discovered you guys, you'd have a whole you'd different perspective exactly. on Christopher Columbus. Exactly. <laughs> He'd be exactly. like, bottom five. <laughs> bottom five. Well, listen, that's the story, though, right? Yo, Tom Brady, top five whites. What about George Washington, bro? G dubs. You got to throw something I, at G dubs. I knew you was going to say that. I, and that's what I said. I said the only people you'll hear people compare it to is the founding fathers. I think Tom Brady should be on Mount Rushmore. Not the Mount Rushmore of athletes, but his goddamn picture up there with George Washington, Thomas Jefferson. Who else is up there? Ben Franklin and Abe Lincoln. Greatest white man of all time is Sean King, hands down. <laughs> There's not even, it Sean is King not there, even bro. close, bro. Sean King up there. I'm going to tell you something. People hate on Sean King, but I'm mm-hmm. going to tell you something, bro. Yeah. When it's all set, when it's all said and done and they talk about civil rights activists, Sean King is going to end up being the most searched king of all time. <laughs> 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 that, listen, listen, Sean King is on Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s heels. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Dr. Martin Luther King, God bless the dead. He ain't out here firing off new tweets, bro, bro. I know, bro. On Instagram. Sean you know King got it, bro. Nobody Sean got King, a better way to go. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s legacy is solidified. But yeah. the, the bad part about having a solidified legacy, you're not here to add on no more wins to it. That's right. And Sean, Sean King, King is just racking up wins. Yo, yo. yo he's he's yo. racking them up. Bro, I'm not even joking. If you ask a certain if you ask a certain generation of people right now, right? A certain demographic. I don't know what the age range would be. I'd say maybe, I don't know, 17, mm-hmm. 25. You say, yo, who's the most famous? civil rights activist king you can think of. Bro, I wouldn't be surprised if Sean comes on. Yo, 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 I'm being yo. honest with you, man. Yo. Are you saying I'm that Sean honest, King bro. is the most relevant king when it comes to civil rights? That's There's think, an argument I, to I, no, be no, made. No, 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 no. It's, it's, it's still Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. hands down. But I'm right. telling you, Sean, because of the digital world we're in, yep. and because of how stupid people are, yep. Good chance that he could get it's it. A good, it's a good chance in the future he'll never be number one on my list. He's never gonna get a boulevard, but he could get like nah. a a road or something like that. I would yo, yo, I'm not gonna say Sean. I'm not gonna get a boulevard. You think he'll get Sean King Boulevard? Bro, Sean King 
is out here, bro. Sean does a lot. Y'all playing with Sean. Yeah, I'm not playing with Sean. I know Sean he does, does a lot. lot. I'm Sean very proud lot, to see my brother out there fighting the cause. <laughs> Sean, does, Sean no. does a lot, bro. I'm just telling you, I think it's, it's, it's Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., the GOAT, greatest of all time. Got you. Not, not too many. He's one of the top transformative figures ever in the history of the world. Facts. But I'm just telling you, when it comes to civil rights activism, in the future, Sean really might be number two, bro. Wow. He At least by just by name, by name he's recognition. Definitely number two king. That's a fact. But can I, he can he take that top spot? What would he have to do to take that top spot? Get real legislation passed that changes the game, like the Civil Rights Act of 1964, mm. like the Voting Rights Act. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. You know, mm. uh Martin Luther King Jr. is you know, even his assassination in a lot of ways led to uh, 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 updated version of the Civil Rights Act where I think, if I'm not mistaken, they introduced HUD. Don't quote me on that because I'm not a scholar and this is the brilliant idiots. But, you know, Martin Luther King Jr. did a lot of transformative things. You know, Sean would have to do, Sean would have to do stuff like that. What's not, more you know, transformative than like being born white and turning black? Okay, <laughs> this guy. <laughs> Isn't that the ultimate transformation? Like, when you really want to talk about... <laughs> <laughs> Sean you... is black. What? <laughs> Come on, bro. Come on. All... Listen, well, uh, listen. We all started in Africa. Thank you, bro. I've been telling people that I'm African, dog. I got a 24 karat AK-47. If that ain't the yeah, most I see, I see African the thing, J, I, I see <laughs> with the J Prince AKA 47. <laughs> Say what? I said the AKA 47. Like that shit is a a sorority. Fraternity, bro. (laughs) What you talking about? That's the AKA 47. You shoot that shit, it goes, (laughs) you gotta fire it with your pinky. Yo, that's right. You fire it once and it just starts stomping the yard. <laughs> you got fire with your pinky. That's how you fire an AKA 47. Yo, that's hard. Yo, I'm gonna, yo, paint that shit pink and green. Yo, you right, bro. And put it on put it on Instagram and say this is an AKA like this, 47. You gotta shoot it upside down, bro. You gotta shoot it upside shoot it down. With your pinky. Listen though, um, I do think I do think that we're 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 not appreciating what we're seeing with Brady. I do I do think that. I do it's think unbelievable. That it's, it's truly un- unbelievable. Unbelievable, man. It's football. Yo, Schultz, we're t- let's talk real for a second. Mm-hmm. We're talking American fucking football. The not for yeah. long league where people last six years, seven at the most. This guy's been around 21. He's 43. Max Kellerman had the greatest point. I don't know. I think you might have said this last week. I don't remember. But Max Kellerman had the greatest point. He was like, even if you took the last five years of Tom Brady's NFL career, he's still a first ballot Hall of Famer. Or no, everything everything he's done since the age of 37. So from 37 to now. I think he's been to five Super Bowls after the age of 37. Won four. Come the fuck on, man. Bro, he has more Super Bowls himself than any team in the NFL. That's wild. That's the craziest statistic. That's wild. He is more himself. And to go to another team and do it and then make Belichick look like an absolute useless tool first, first, I mean, year, brilliant. first year after leave, first year after leaving the Patriots but I mean it's just unbelievable do you remember when Belichick tried to trade him because he wanted to start Jimmy Garoppolo do you remember that somebody was telling me that this week I don't remember that one though. yeah that's what happened bro anyway it is what it is but that is absolutely idiot. something yeah and what a fucking idiot is Robert Orr what did Robert Orr do he, he, he said he welcomed Brady to the Seven Ring Club. Man, Robert, 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 Robert. <laughs> Listen, Robert. I got mad respect for Robert Ory. I think Robert Ory is dope. But it's the difference between Robert, Robert Ory got rings, right? But it's the difference with Michael Jordan saying, I got six, or Magic saying, I got five, and Robert saying, I got seven. I think you have to be the catalyst of a team winning those rings yeah to be able to like brag about it like come on rob it's like a billionaire's wife bragging about being a billionaire you know and it's just like what if she helped though what what if she helped 
they do help. There's no question yeah, that yeah. wives help. Yeah. You know, but it's not the same as the making same. it. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I, I mean? Get, I'm not saying Robert didn't help. Man, Robert hit big fucking shots. Big shots. Big, big shot, shot Bob. Bob. Big shot Bob. But Gotta give him his credit. He knows it's different. People are just trying to attach themselves to greatness. That's what this is about. Like, you see LeBron doing it. That shit is sad. LeBron is so thirsty to attach himself to Tom Brady's greatness, bro. Tweeting nonstop like a little fangirl. And I really think that that's about LeBron recognizing that he'll never do what Brady did. So he's trying to latch on to the identity of Brady to put himself in that same space because he knows he'll never be able to win seven like Brady. Listen, even if Braun wins seven, even though I do think Braun is going to win at least, I think I do think Braun going to win at least one more. One more, yeah, sure. One more, maybe I do two. Think he's gonna win at least one. Maybe two. I do honestly. So that'll put him at six. But yo, once again, I go back to the fact that the degree of difficulty in football is different than the NBA. And guess what? Even though Brady went, Brady went to ten Super Bowls, which is unprecedented in the NFL, he won seven shows. Yep. Do you realize this is the only time the Tom Brady has had a blowout victory in a Super Bowl? Yeah. Every game has been super close. That's so because this- he was coached by Bill Belichick, who's a bum. And if he had a real coach, then he would have had a blowout victory like this. Notice his coach didn't even have a Super Bowl victory. Bruce Arians, oldest coach to win a Super Bowl. That's how dope Tom Brady is. He could take a loser, put him in the position as coach, and then win him a Super Bowl the first year. It's brilliant. Belichick. I can't wait until I can't wait until the Patriots win the Super Bowl next year. Yo, yo. The Patriots will not Bill Belichick will never win a Super Bowl again. And I'd be surprised if he makes it to the playoffs for the rest of I his love, career. I love when you make those definitive statements like that. Because hey, the bro. exact opposite comes true. Hey, bro, we got a lot of podcasts <laughs> to do. Okay. You know what I mean? We got a lot of time to fill. There's a lot of podcasts to do this week. I can't be reasonable and pointed in every one of my takes. Sometimes we got to cook some shit up, baby. You got to cook some shit up. I like the take, though. I like the take. Just saying. I don't believe the take because you underestimate one thing and one thing only the will of a white man scorned. That right. is a good ass point, bro. Bill Belichick and e- and even Robert Kraft to a certain extent, they not going to want to feel like everybody thinks Tom Brady was the sole reason mm. that they won all those goddamn Super Bowls. They about to spend top motherfucking dollar to do what they got to do to make the Patriots a contender. But I they expect can only them to make a so lot much. of moves this offseason. They can only spend so much. There's a salary cap. Right? They don't got shit though. They ain't paying nobody now. Who they paying? They should listen. They had the opportunity to do something last season. It's not like they had a bum quarterback. They had a past MVP of the league, right? Coming on, coming off of tons of time off. And they just couldn't get it done because they're not good. The Patriot way is the Tom Brady way. And the second Brady left, the Patriots stink. Honestly, Tom Brady is the leader of that team. I bet you Tom Brady was involved in the defensive schemes as well. I bet you. Bill Belichick was useless. Tom Brady was like, just show up in your stupid fucking sweatshirt that you cut the sleeves off of. There's a reason why Bill Belichick wouldn't answer questions in the press conference. Because he didn't know the answers. Because he's a fucking babysitter. The guy does nothing. Nothing at all. Useless. I, I, I disagree. But we'll see. I, we'll, we'll see. We don't and, see, and, and, bro. And, and speaking of coaches, you, I will. Tom Brady was greatly coached. We had Byron Leftwich, offensive coordinator, Todd Bowles, defensive coordinator, both brothers. Who, who, who? I gotta just say, what a fucking idiot to that reporter. What's that reporter's name? Taylor Matthew McDonald or some shit like that. Chickety Tinder. Mother, motherfuckers interviewing Byron Leftwich and gonna ask Byron Leftwich about his defensive scheme and how wow. the fuck his how his. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Just because he's Byron black, Byron he got to be the was defensive a, coach, huh? Who was it, Michael Donaldson? Michael Donaldson. Byron left, which is like, uh, you got the wrong person, man. You need to ask Todd about that. It's just like, God damn, bro. All black fucking coordinators don't look alike, which is another reason. Well, I will always continue to get the Beatles wrong on fucking purpose. What, who are the Beatles? Elton John, Sting, John Travolta, and Keanu Reeves. That's a fire band right there, bro. That's, that's the Beatles, bro. That's a fire and I, ass band. And I, and I love saying, I love saying, yo, man, Justin Bieber was always my favorite member of NSYNC. I see what you did there, dude. 
I they on Justin you. Timberlake ass too, by the way. Why do you they? What that? is it? What is going on here? Don't what? act like your girl ain't make you watch that Britney documentary. Nah, she was watching it alone today. <laughs> Are you so- <laughs> she was watching it for real. <laughs> yeah, I'm still here at the studio at fucking midnight doing the Brilliant Idiots podcast, baby. She hit you? Say what? Now nah, she said I'm watching. I was like, I was like, no. Yeah, they give they they giving they giving people a lot of flack for the way that they used to. Uh, the way that they used to treat Britney, they they on this is all secondhand information. I don't know anything about this shit. I just have, <laughs> you know, white girls around me. Uh-huh. You know, like like my my partner Karen and, and Paige. Yep. And they were distraught about this shit. Yeah, don't fuck with Britney. <laughs> my homegirl Erica America, you know Erica. They were distraught about this shit. I didn't know Britney Spears meant so much to so many people, bro. Bro, that's our Mary J. Blige. You said what? Britney yeah. is a white people's Beyonce. No, Britney's white people's Mary J. Blige. It's different. Okay. I wish Taylor would stop saying that. And, and you know, so I mean, yeah. I had this conversation <laughs> in the studio. Britney's, and, and I love we, I love Beyonce. Britney Spears is way bit was way bigger than Beyonce. Bro. Like wow, wow. Maybe, maybe not. I mean, at one point, she was the biggest star in the world. And, and not saying, not saying Beyonce wasn't, but just. Look at the album sales. Free Look up Britney, the album bro. sales. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But at, I don't know who was bigger at their peak, Britney Spears or Beyonce. But I know Britney was massive as fuck. Bro. Big, big, like big. Yes, like massive as mother, massive as a motherfucker. Um, I, I will say this. I don't mm-hmm. like the fact that whatever the fuck happened, it drove Britney Spears crazy. Her mental health was severely impacted and severely affected. I just thought it was because of stardom. You know what I mean? Yep. Which I do. St- I still think stardom plays a major role in it, man, because I really, truly do feel like, bro, let's be honest, man. Nobody's meant to be that famous. Ooh, that's a Nobody's good Nobody's meant thing. to be that famous. It's the, it's the same thing with social media. You're not meant to interact with millions and hundreds of thousands and thousands of people every day. And I just think that there's nobody meant to be that famous. You shouldn't be so famous that you can't even fucking go to the grocery store. You shouldn't be so famous that, you know, you got to put mask on your kids and all that. Other, like what? Seriously, what kind of way is that to live? Because it's, it's when you're rich, right? You're part of the one percent. Mm-hmm. When you're super famous and rich, what percentage is that? There's only a few people on this planet that have ever felt that. Yeah, that's true. Who wants to live like that? Your kids can never have a normal life. You can never have a normal life. That shit will drive anybody fucking insane. Bro. Yeah, that is a good point. Especially if you do it as a kid before you know who you are. Come on. I mean, listen, man, it's just it's just hard. You know what I mean? So my heart does go out to her in that aspect. I got empathy for her. Is there a reason why you feel so connected to white women? <laughs> gorilla glue. It's it's gorilla glue. <laughs> right? Gorilla glue. Gorilla glue is what has me connected Yo, to white women. Okay? Can you it's explain gorilla this gorilla glue scenario, man? What happened, bro? I, I I'm not sure, uh, but I will give what a fucking idiot to the people who are telling that young lady to sue. To sue gorilla glue? They're telling her to sue gorilla glue. I think I read some tweet where Man, where's that tweet at, Taylor? What happened? This young lady put Gorilla Glue in her hair. Okay. Because she was um, she was trying to keep her fucking hair down. Explain it, Taylor. You a black woman? Okay, so um, basically, she sprayed. She got confused. She thought that her spraying her hair with Gorilla Glue would be the same as her spraying her hair with like the regular hair stuff. Um, and I honestly. I don't feel any sympathy for her because now I'm thinking about it. Gorilla Glue is nowhere in the hair store. How do you no. even? How do you she even get that? No hair store. She went to it's Home not Depot. The hair aisle. Exactly. Even though she went to CVS, it wouldn't even be in there. And I feel like what's funny is she probably sprayed that on her, and a couple like the next day she's like, "Oh shit, my hair's still laid and shit." Probably hype as hell, knowing <laughs> damn well that it's still fucked up. Like it's actually fucked up, and, and that's why I say it's crazy for people to be telling her to sue. Like I saw somebody say um, something about uh, gorilla glue. You, you, black women use hair glue, right? And the, and the person in the tweet emphasized this. He was like, "Black it's women use," but no, he put hair glue, right? But that 
right there makes everything you're saying null and void. Because Gorilla Glue is not hair glue. Gorilla Glue is not in hair stores. Gorilla Glue is not on the hair aisle. There's no reason to be putting Gorilla Glue in your fucking hair. No, but Why, that what, is... What do gorillas got to do with glue? <laughs> I think that's what we need to be asking. Why do gorillas have anything to do with glue? It's the alliteration, bro. That's all it is. People love alliteration, bro. But Charmaine, there is a Gorilla Gel. And no, it's, it's the not. Same it's, type gorilla, of... it's called Gorilla Snot. Okay. No, what well when I when I looked it up, it said Gorilla Gel and it looked like the same type of No it doesn't. Um, it's the two totally yes, different packaging. Did. Stop. You say anything, Taylor. Oh my gosh. All right, fine. Gorilla gorilla it's called Gorilla Snot for hair. Gorilla Snot gel. It's in the, the orange tube, right? You said what? Which one are you looking at? Because I looked it up yesterday. No, you did. Was... You go you you Googled Gorilla Snot Gel, oh and the first thing that came up was the Gorilla Glue Clear Spray Adhesive no. that she shouldn't have been using. And that's what you were looking at. That's the orange one. No, not okay. Well, this one's yellow, my bad, but and there's a gorilla on it. I'm gonna send it to you. What? I'm gonna send it to you what I'm, it is what I'm looking at. What? Gorilla hey, what? Gorilla Snot? <laughs> I'm gonna put it in the chat. It's really not. The Gorilla Snot Gel bottle is yellow. It's shaped like a fucking like yeah, a banana. That's what I'm at. Yeah, that's what it's, it's not the not. same. But she at probably all. thought it was because it's two gorillas. That's all. No, nah, that shit all is, that shit is similar, like... bro. That shit is <laughs> nah, similar, bro. No, no, it's not. She should nah. sue, but bro. But it literally doesn't. She, she should she sue, raised, bro. I hate to be the only one thir- defending 13, black 000. women on this show, <laughs> but she gotta sue, bro. I hate, once again, here I am, the only one defending black queens <laughs> on this whole program, but she got to sue, bro. That black queen got her wig snatched by Gorilla Glue when she was just trying to Gorilla Snot. It's a foolish lawsuit, <laughs> and she's 40 years old. She's not oh, some yeah, young she's girl. she's 42. She's, for, she's 42? No, I said, no. I was oh, agreeing. she's 40. She's 40 years old. She should know better. Hair is no joke. Black women don't play about their hair. Don't she should play. not be experimenting at this time in her life. She just shouldn't, bro. I'm sorry. But salute to Tessica Brown. We wish you the best. We hope that you know. So what happened? You, she had to shave it off? Fix it. I don't I don't know what the hell she happened. Cut, she was so. able to cut the ponytail off, but I don't know if she shaved it off, but she raised 13000 for what? what? Like, what do you do in that? Or she says she. It, there's no description, but it said she says she's gonna eat it for her medical bills. I guess. Well, medical bills. Shouts yeah. to her, man. Hospital well, bills, whatever. <clears throat> salute, salute to her, man. Seriously, what, 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 man. No, salute to her. I do, I do, I do truly wish her the best. All right, let's stop and pay some bills. Um, just a trying to improve your diet in the new year. I know I am. I know I am because last year. During the pandemic, uh, I did my diet that Dr. Natasha Sandy puts me on. And, you know, I got down to 170, which is my weight. I got on the scale the other day and I was at 187 and I do not want to be on, on, at 187. OK, so a good place for me to start is Just Eggs. Just Eggs scrambles, cooks and tastes just like the eggs you're used to, but it's made from plants. OK, Just Egg is protein packed, but with less saturated fat and no cholesterol. And that's a big deal knowing how much cholesterol is in eggs. If you have two chicken eggs with breakfast, that's already 124% of your recommended cholesterol for the day. The science is pretty clear. Plant-based diets can have a dramatic improvement in everything from heart health to life longevity. Now, would you, would you fuck with the plant-based poultry shows? Would you of fuck course. With just- you got to do it, man. Absolutely. If it looks like it, it tastes like it, and it's better for me, I'm all about it. Simple mm. as that. I need what looks good, tastes good, and is healthy. Because your boy out here getting thick. <laughs> I'm thick, bro. Thick, 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 thick. Bro, I am thick, thick, super thick, thick, thick. thick. It's it's a, it's a problem, bro. Really? Yeah, I got to lose weight. You ain't weight. thick as Mark, bro. You ain't thick as Mark. No, nah, I don't got it back there like Mark. Mark built like a donkey. <laughs> so just Egg is a great way to start eating more plant-based for your health without sacrificing taste. It tastes and cooks just like conventional eggs. Put it in an omelet, scramble it, French toast, banana bread, pot pie, whatever you like to do with your eggs. Did I pronounce that right? Did I land that? I fucked that up? <laughs> it's not pot thai. Pad thai. Pate? Pad thai. 
Pad Thai. <laughs> oh, so it's actually pronounced the way it looks. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah, exactly, right. bro. Well, that well, was just great. Egg is just egg is also better for the planet, using 93% fewer carbon emissions and 98% less water than a conventional egg. It takes 53 gallons of water to produce a single egg. Yes, 53 gallons. Another good reason to go plant-based. You can find Just Egg pretty much anywhere at most grocery stores, including Whole Foods, Walmart, and Kroger. And on Amazon Prime now or Instacart, Just Egg, a better egg for you and your family. Thank you, Just Egg. It's a great product and from a company with a great mission. We're proud to have you on the brilliant idiots. Um, I got another bill to pay. Squarespace, our great sponsor, Squarespace. Shouts uh, to Squarespace, Squarespace, man. Man, we got I got so much love for Squarespace. They they Most. always hold us down. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. You'll find what you need, whether you're showcasing your work, blogging, publishing content, selling products and services, announcing upcoming events, or anything you can dream of. Okay, buying a domain from Squarespace is easy. Because there are no hidden fees or price hikes. And you get to know your audience with their analytics tools. Okay, Those include insight on page views, traffic sources, time on site, audience, geography, and more. It's all so simple, too. Okay, Start with a design template and use drag and drop tools to make it your own. All websites are optimized for mobile. Your site looks great on any device. Every Squarespace website and online store comes with a suite <clears throat> of integrated features and useful guides that help maximize prominence among search results. These SES tools are paramount. Head to squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code idiot to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash idiot with offer code idiot for 10% off your first purchase. Now, let's get back to the show. Do you have some church announcements, show T? Yo, I'm back on tour, man. I'm back okay, on let's tour. DeAndrewSchultz.com. Go check out the uh, the shows. We got a few shows up right now. A bunch of them are sold out already. Um, so go get them real quick. But I'll be in Salt Lake City, then Columbus, then Nashville, then Atlanta, then Raleigh, North Carolina, West Palm Beach, Phoenix, Arizona, and then Tampa Bay, Florida. And I start going out on the road in March. And it's going to be good to be back. And I'm down here in Florida, and I'm going to try to get on stage out here as well because it's been about a year since I did stand-up. So I'm excited just to get back into it, man, to start crafting up this special and make something um, make something really funny but also, like, really unique. I got some ideas, right. man. I got some ideas. My church announcements are simple. Uh, go pre-order Tamika Mallory's book. State of Emergency, mm -hmm. How to Win in the Country We Built. It'll be out May 11th on Black Privilege, uh, Shine and Schuster Publishing. Um, so go get that. And, you know, just continue to check out the podcast on the Black Effect Podcast Network. We really appreciate it. And, you know, show to you out there living reckless in Florida, bro. I saw you in a fucking packed-ass club, bro. Hmm. I already got it, bro. You keep saying that. Yeah, you know I mean, they got new, they got new variants, bro. Nah, I don't believe in that. <laughs> I don't believe in that, bro. I don't believe in that. I don't like. If you ask me if I believe, believe in, in it, variants, man. I don't believe in it. I think my antibodies really? got it. I think my antibodies are nice. Really? I got the one size fits all, dog. It don't <laughs> have matter. You checked, like, have you checked to see if you got antibodies? Because you know you can do the antibody test to see if you still got them. Well, I already had I had corona, so I figure I got some fucking antibodies out of that it shit. Only last three months, they say though. Well, I've I got it two months ago, so I'm still out here. And it was in, that long ago? Yeah, December. So I got December, mm -hmm. January, February. So I got to rock through Black History Month with these antibodies, and then come March. You know, then we'll see what we got to do. But I think my well, antibodies I, I, are I, good. I really do wonder what the fuck Florida and Georgia Bro, are let me, doing. They don't that care. Nobody else is doing. Son, can I tell you something? They don't care. Everybody here has already had it. You was, when you get here, you go out. You assume you're gonna get it. Okay. I can't say who might have gotten it or who might not have gotten it. Doesn't matter. But the point is, you just somebody, go somebody out. Somebody in the crew got it again. No, nobody got it again. That's also a myth. Okay. I don't think that you can get it again. But there's uh, literally we're out. It is what it is. Everybody gets it. And then you just keep it moving. That's literally how they deal with it here. You just assume you're going to get it. You get it. You deal with it for a week. And then you're back in the game and you are ready to rock and roll. I mean, clubs are open. Restaurants are open. Bars are open. It is life as usual. Normal. People shake your hand when they meet you. 
You know what I mean? Like it is life before Corona and they are thriving. Let's open up a club down there, a comedy club called Herd Immunity. I love that. The HI. I love Hi. that. I when you love walk in, that. Corona waves at you. We get like the, yeah. we have like a virus mascot. When you walk in, he's just like, "Hi, yes. hi!" Everybody yes. comes in, they shake hands, they hug. You can let them pass joints around. You know what I mean? Share hookahs. It's just the way to get the herd immunity going. Admit baby. that you admit you miss it. Admit you see it. You're like, no. man, I want to go out. I'm a recluse, bro. You I, listen. I'm a homebody. You talk about antibodies. I'm a homebody. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I'm a cancer. I like to be home. I don't miss any of this shit. I'm gonna be honest with you. The only thing I do miss, honestly, I'm just only thing I do miss is a good comedy show mm-hmm. and a good dinner, like a good like. Cause you know, I like to have big dinners. You've been to my joint. I like to have big dinners with family and friends. You know what I mean? We sit around, laugh, and kick it. Other than that, I don't miss this shit, bro. Bro, move down here, bro. What are you doing? Just move down here. You got to come down for a month. Come down for a month, see how it feels, and then do more. Simple as oh, no, that. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely coming to Miami while you're down there. Hey. No, that's, 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 I'm, I'm definitely coming down there. I'm, I'm, yeah. coming, I'm coming down there while you're there. I'm going to come for a weekend or something. Let's I gotta get go. Once, once this move is over, I'm in there, brother. When are you moving into the new spot? This weekend. Really? Excited or what? Um, Man, that's such an interesting question. Uh, I was telling my wife last night, like this is, this is the first house I ever bought. Mm. Prior, prior to um, you know this, I rented a house. You know, what I mean, I stayed in apartments my whole life, and then I I rented a house. This is the first house I ever bought, and I, I was even telling my wife, like, man, I'm I'm so attached to this house. I wonder if we should have just kept it as a rental property, right? And um. I was thinking about, I literally was thinking about this last night. That's why it's so crazy you asked me. It's like we, we've been living in this house for five years, and this is a house where, like, memories were actually created. Like, yeah. my second daughter is five. You know, my, my, my third daughter is two. You know, this is, you know, even though we've been here for five years, I can count on, like, I think I've, it's been, like, 16 people that have been to my house over, over these five years. Like, literally, like, 16 people. Like, you know, other, other than, like, my, my mom and my dad, her mom and her dad. But yeah. like friends, right? And uh, we got good memories here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm in the basement right now. We've had some great memories in this basement. We've gotten super fucked up in this basement playing spades with with family. You know what I'm saying? Like like, and it's it's just you know we got like I said we got good memories here. I've had great conversations in, in this basement. I've come up with great ideas sitting in the backyard. You know what I mean? Hugging my tree. I'm gonna miss my tree that I hug. Even though I got plenty of them where I'm going, but I'm gonna miss the one I hug. My my sacred purpose coach Yadi actually told me to bury some um some gems in the roots of the tree. So Debbie Dev, Debbie Brown sent me a bunch of stones to bury there. But yeah, I'm I'm attached to this house because of the memories. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like my ghost will be I'm not saying my ghost will live here. I'm saying there is a ghost of me that's here. You know, you ever watch those movies and they show like uh like like a, a scene where like things are growing up, but they show like Christmases and you know Thanksgivings and first time kids rode bikes. Like a lot of that happened here. Yeah, I'm 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 gonna always have a lot of memories here. So, but yes, I'm very excited to go create new memories at the new spot. But I am attached to this. This you this sold property. the house already? House is sold, baby. Well, that new must Jersey. have been good. The oh. Jersey real estate market is hot, booming, baby. booming. booming. And not that I mean, I mean, I did, I did mad renovations when I when I moved in because this basement wasn't done at all. It was just all slabs and shit. So right. I turned half of it into like the bar, black privilege lounge area. Can right? we see? And then, and then the other side is the is the gym. Oh, you know what I mean. And then outside, I put the pergola. Yeah, you got you know that what pergola, I mean? it's, it's a, bro. A pergola outside. So yeah, I did a I did a lot of different renovations to this crib. So you know, it was it was it was prime it was it was prime real estate when it went on the market. But yes, Yo, it's sold. You got a unique ability to um, manage to cut half your face off every single time you look into the camera, bro. It's impressive, bro. <laughs> it's honestly impressive, bro. I've been, every, I've been this shit throughout Slowly the whole episode. Over. <laughs> I only want you to see half of me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> what's wrong? What's wrong with just seeing half of me, bro? 
There's there we go. Wrong to have me. Listen, they, let's do they say that. Sorry to interrupt, but they say that moving is is one of the most stressful things to people. Now you're not stressed at all by this. Um, I was because I thought I sold the crib too fast. Mm. Because the new house, the renovations aren't done yet. Mm. And um, you know the 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 the, 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 the con contractor was was off on the time. Mm. And so, like, you know, my wife is getting a lot of renovations done. So I was stressed because I was like, damn, we shouldn't have sold this house because I thought I was going to have to rent a house. Yeah. To live in. But nah, we're just going to live through renovations. Then. We're just going to thug it out. I love it. Because, you know, the house is pretty spacious. So OK. You know, OK. The, what the area? Section, the section of the house they're working on. <laughs> It's a lot more house to live in. That's all, you know. Hey, you know. Hey. Can you can you tell me the area? What do you mean? Where you're living? Like, is it in Jersey? Can you? Uh... Nah, nah, because you can't have what you're holding in your hand in Jersey. You know what I'm saying? You can only have handguns. Oh, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I can have that AKA 47, bro. You know what I mean? In Florida, bro. Let me just show you how to cock this shit. In Florida, bro, you could do so whatever you, you want. Shoot Alex, that shit will be so stupid. Say what? If you accidentally shoot Alex, that'll be so stupid. Nah, dude. I can't shoot Al. That's my guy. Oh, that's just real? Yeah. It's a 24 karat gold AK-47, bro. What the fuck you think? You think I'm having a fake AK-47 on the podcast? You know what I mean? Damn. And then, so I had to come out here and flex in Florida with my peoples. Listen, you know what I mean? Do some, let's do some shit you won't care about <laughs> next week. What? Yo, your boy Trump about to get impeached. Eh, I believe it when I see it. Nah, I, I haven't been following. I, I can give a, when I see it. I can give a flying fuck about politics, bro. I'm in Florida, dude. In That's Florida, the home people of politics. Don't care. Say what? Florida is the politics capital of the world. No, bro. This is the um, this is the uh, the home of Andrew Gillum and uh, Motel Meth orgies. Big AG, big AG. I did Bottomed Andrew's podcast out. this week. Say what? I did, Andrew, I did Andrew's podcast this week. Make sure y'all check that out. Oh shit! Did you ask him about the uh, event? That ain't none of my business. That's not what I was on that podcast for. What were you on the podcast for? Uh, we were talking about a bunch of different stuff. You know what I mean? Like talking about anxiety and depression and you yeah. know, talking about, uh, you know, just politics and, you know, creating, creating a black political, black political culture. That's all. You should read Andrew's story in GQ because it is very, it's a very interesting story because it's, it goes back to what we was talking about when we talk about, you know, is GQ short for LGB? <laughs> he falls. He falls into that category. Oh, that's right. He said he's bi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he definitely falls into that category. He falls Respect. in that category. Respect. Respect, bro. Know, it's, it's um, it's 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 a very interesting because you know you you realize, like imagine, like you, you're 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 getting the way you need to be, right, Schultz? You're growing as cool. a as a personality, as a comedian, everything, and. Let's just say right before you're about to do that one monumental thing that gets you where you want to be. In his case, it was governor of Florida. It doesn't happen. You, you, by this much, like literally this much, you lose 30 something thousand votes, whatever, whatever. Sends you into a spiral. You Thank know? God, and, though. And, real talk. Cause Florida be closed if Andrew Gillum was a governor. I doubt it. Bro, be honest. You think dude. so? It's Democrat leadership, man. They're gonna close it all down, man. That's what it, it ain't is. That, what else is closed? New York. New York ain't closed. New York just dead. Yo, 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 yeah, yeah. Nah, 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 yo, nah. Yo, it's yo, over, bro. Yeah. You can't. Nah, you can't backtrack, bro. You already said it. You said New York is. You said New York is the Bill Belichick of fucking cities, bro. <laughs> That's what you said. You said we once thought the fucking city was great, and then we found out that it was fucking not. It was overrated and overhyped. Maybe we found that out by coming down to Florida, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> like, by the way, like millions of other New Yorkers had, Noriega is like, welcome to the party. Fat Joe is like, welcome to the party, fucking Andrew. <laughs> All right? Fuck is wrong with you? Cold ass winners. <laughs> People didn't think Northwest painted that goddamn picture. She ain't paint that picture. Come on, bro. Y'all be hating. Why y'all hate so much? I mean, did she paint it? I don't really care. I don't but... know. 
I have no idea. I don't see Kim, why somebody would lie about that. Kim also just put a video up of her showing what uh, she did when she was one years old to one of her like designer bags. What? Hey, what? You have to just go on YouTube. Kim put up a picture or a video of North doing art on her designer bag and she like oh, yo, yo, Taylor, it. you don't got to double down on shit we don't care about yeah yeah, is, yeah yeah it's just yeah, shit yeah. we won't care about next week we don't really give a fuck yeah yo, yo, Taylor it's, it's all good, painted bro. the paint the night right. I will I will say this this is one thing I do give a fuck about because it's just more proof how dangerous the goddamn internet is how the fuck not even the internet the media period how does the LA oh. Sentinel wake up one morning and run a story saying that Lauren London is pregnant that's a fucking established newspaper in L.A. And so that shit becomes a super trending topic all over social media, only for Lauren London to say, what the fuck is wrong with y'all? Like, where does this, where do people pull this type of shit out of thin air? Well, I've got a We're rumor gonna, for, uh, that we rumor? can pull out of thin air. Talk to me. Word on the streets is Chappelle's getting the rights to his show back from Comedy Central. That's the word on the streets. But you thought, you thought he wasn't? Well, I think that. Yeah. Get the fuck out of here. That's Dave. Listen, let me tell you something. Yeah. That's Dave motherfucking Chappelle. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Like, like, in this climate, the last thing they want is smoke with Dave motherfucking Chappelle. That's a that's also a very good point. And and and, and Dave has reached a level of uh folk hero ness. Mm. Folklore, like he's like a mythical figure. You don't want no, you don't want no problems with that. Like you, mm. you don't, you don't want to be the guy that's holding on to the Chappelle show. Mm. You know what I mean? Did you just lose my video? It says battery exhausted. Damn. Yeah, you don't, you, you don't want to be the guy that's 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 holding on to the Chappelle show. You don't want to be that person. You don't want to be the person that Dave Chappelle is getting on stage. Uh, going at night after night. Like, give him the rights to the show back. Who gives a shit? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. You're right. And, and, and listen, Dave said it himself. He said, um, it's crooked. Oh. It's business. Yeah. But is it right? It just depends how you look at it. I look at it as it's business. And I think what Dave is doing is business. He's got leverage because he's Dave motherfucking Chappelle. So yeah, that's that he's true. Dave Chappelle, you know, I do, I do, oh, I do. Shoot. Um, I wish he'd tell us more of the story, though. Yeah, nah, I hear I, you. I, I would, I would like him to tell us more of the story. Tell us how that happened. Tell us how he, you know, ended up in that position to begin with. You know. Yeah, I agree with you. That'd be that'd be nice to know. But it was a really impressive chess move that he played. He basically made the show unsellable. Yeah, I just wish Dave would tell, you know, the full story. Like, you know, give us some details on how you ended up, you know, in, in that situation to begin with. You know, I'm not I'm not sure the full story of the business is, is, is being told. But, you mm. know, other than that, I wouldn't even call it a chess move. It's just Dave Chappelle being in a position of power. You know what I mean? Leveraging his cultural cachet to, to, to get back something he wants. Yeah, I'm just saying the chess move is like by... Making the show radioactive, nobody will want to buy it, right? Because he will, he'll make those networks look so awful to the people that the networks want to support. Um, and by doing that, if you can't sell a show, you might as well just give back the assets. Like a show is only valuable if you can sell it. You know what I mean? Yeah. If I can't, if I can't air it, what's the point? If it, if I'm if I'm Viacom. And, you know, Netflix says, look, man, we're not running this shit because Dave don't want us to. If HBO Max says we're not running this shit because Dave don't want us to, what do you do? Let it sit in the vault? Yeah. Or, or, or do you want to make some of that licensing money? The only way to make some of that licensing money is to give, give Dave back the rights to the show or structure the contract the way it's more in Dave's favor. Who the fuck knows? You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, man. He fucking but, did um, it. I'm not mad at it. You know, I've seen I've seen this happen before. You know, um, like, like, like Jay-Z used his leverage once. To, 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 to get his masters back. Really? You know? Yeah, 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 absolutely. When he became a uh, president of Def Jam, I, I, I don't remember the whole story in detail, but I mean, that's what you do. You grow, you evolve, and you put yourself in a position of power to right a lot of the wrongs that you made when you was younger. Mm. The game is about. Mm. I think so anyway. 
Yeah. That's, that's my personal take on it. Yeah. Um, what else we got? Aunt Jamama finally has a new name. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Pearl Milling Company. So yeah. if you're going to the store looking for Aunt Jamama syrup, that ain't happening no more. Yeah. Uh, what else? Oh, Van Jones. Did you see Van Jones on the View? No. Oh yeah, he got it. Sunny, Sunny, and Anna, and Anna. They jumped on his ass. They, they did Van. They, they jumped all over Van. For what? Um, for doing shit like taking selfies with Candace Owens. For they called him a political opportunist. Um, they said that Sunny told him that a lot of black people don't trust him. Really? And, um, you know? Yeah, and I mean, two things can be true, right? I mean, listen, I wouldn't call Van Jones a political opportunist. Uh, I would call Van because because all all politicians are opportunists. Well, that's, Van's that's, not a politician. He's not even a politician. But that's what I mean. When you say political opportunists, it's like everybody in politics is opportunist. That's just the nature of the, the game. Right. I would say Van Jones is a political dick rider. Ooh. And the big problem shot. with no 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 that's not a shot. It's just it's just it's just a way of phrasing something because he's willing to ride who's ever empowers dick to get something done you know and, and by the way when i call it dick riding i'm just using that as as hood slang usually you know we say somebody's dick riding when they're showing a lot of love to someone if it's a guy showing a lot of love to a person they'll be like yo stop dick riding you know what i mean or or stop ass kissing question if yes. you're riding the dick <laughs> you're the top no you're on top. Yeah, but if you're riding that dick, it means the dick is in you. It's in you, but you're still on top. You're a power bottom. You're a power bottom. Yeah, you're good a power point. bottom. Good you're point. A power bottom. Good point. Okay, so back bottom. to Van. You know, just, no, just, just, just with Van, it's just like, you know, dick riding will never be a respectable form of transportation. And when people mm. don't understand... What it is you're doing, like, uh, yes, Van gets a lot of people out of prison. You know, Van has gotten prisons. Van has helped. He's helped to get, get a lot of people out of prison. He's helped to get a lot of prisons, you know, closed down. He does great work. And he's willing to cozy up with whoever's in power to get the work done, whether it's Democrat or Republican. He's been doing it for the past couple of decades. So, you know, uh, people may not agree with his methods. You know what I mean? People what is he doing, doing now, doing. though, that people are so upset about? I think I think it's that, though. It's just the fact that he cozied up to the Trump administration. You know what I mean? It was like, yo, people were saying things like, you didn't have to be all in the White House smiling, showing your teeth. When the reality is, look, man, if this is something that you've been fighting for, you probably, you'd smile, you know, mm -hmm. once that first step back gets done. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Regardless of who the president is. So I can't, I can't judge that man because I'm not doing the work that he's doing. Mm. You know what I mean? That man, Van Jones actually, he does get a lot of shit done with, with with the help of Reform Alliance and the help of other grassroots organizations. He does get things done. But I do think two things can be true. I think that he can do great work, but people can also look at him and say, "Hey, bro, you're doing too much skinning and grinning, man. You don't got to do all that just to get something done." What is you the know? negative side of doing the skinning and grinning if it gets the thing done? I don't think that the only negative, the only negative side is all on Van. You understand what I'm saying? Meaning like the positive helps so many other people, meaning the positive helps people get out of prison. The positive helps those families to be re reunited. Right. The negative is Van got to eat that criticism. And but honestly, man, if Van, if Van really cares about, you know, prison reform and getting people out of jail the way I think he does, that's just a small price to pay. Yeah, because if you really care about prison reform, you're not going to stop caring about it because the opposition is in office. You got to care about that every single day. So you got to yeah. work with whoever's there. I mean, that's what politics is. That's the I, point I of this game is work with whoever's there. This idea where you just go bah humbug and then like cross your arms and refuse to talk to the people on the other side. That's not politics. That's not I democracy. Would, I will say I can see how people feel about the Trump shit, though, only because, you know, there, there's never a reason to normalize anything the Trump administration was doing because what the Trump administration doing was just simply not normal. So he didn't have sometimes you normalize it when you get on TV and you say things like, 
in that moment, Donald Trump became president. Like, eh, you know, all that's debatable. I, I, I personally don't think he had to do all of that. I don't think he should have normalized, you know, Trump in that way. But once again, it's hard to criticize Van Jones because Van Jones is out there doing the work. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And you know, listen, most motherfuckers that are really passionate about something, they don't care how they look to other people as long as they get shit done. Yeah. <laughs> they just, they just, yeah. They just don't give a fuck. Yeah. They're not doing it for the optics. They doing that shit because they really, really want to get shit done. Nah, and guess what? Point. Don, uh, Van Jones, he, he dick rode Donald Trump. He going to dick ride Joe Biden. Wasn't there a song called Dick Riding Obama? No, I never heard of it. Yes, it was. Wasn't there a, a, vi- a song that went viral called Dick Riding Obama? No, nah, I mean, maybe. Who is it by? Yeah, that's the fucking Boondocks. I'm tripping. Yes, oh. the Boondocks. The Boondocks did a song called Dick Riding Obama. <laughs> it was it was from an episode of the Boondocks. I think actually Will I Am, Will I Am actually wrote it, I, I believe. Don't quote me on that. But How does Dick it Riding go? Obama was a song in the Boondocks. People dick ride presidents, bro. The fucking president. But how does it go? What's the song? Uh, let me see if I can pull it up here. It's on YouTube, guys. Well, you we'll get flagged. Heard it. You said what? We're going to get flagged if we bring it up. Really? Yeah. It's only a minute and 12 seconds long. I think it only takes a few seconds before they flag it. YouTube's on that oh, ass. Let me, see if I can, let, me, let me see if I can find the lyrics. Then we do Dick Rodden Obama. You know, you see, man, you got to watch the Boondocks. That's what you and your wife, you need to sit down and watch them, man. Really? The goddamn over Boondocks. The, over the Britney shit? Yes. Dick Riding Obama. Yeah, Will I Am and Thugnificent. Let me see if I can find the fucking lyrics. Mm. Uh, got up this morning. Things were working right. I said I want to make a change. I said I want to fight. Obama walked up and said, yes, we can. I said I want to ride your nuts because I think you're the man. Now I'm dick riding. Obama, Obama, now I'm dick riding. Obama, Obama, now I'm dick riding. Obama, Obama. That's the fucking joint. That shit used to slap, bro. Nah, that's fire right there, yo. That shit used to fucking yeah, that slap. that fire, bro. So, the moral of the story is I don't think Van Jones is a political opportunist. I just think he's a political dick rider. And it's fine. Um, you know what I'm saying? He's willing to do that. Let him be willing to do that to get motherfuckers out of prison so they don't have to ride dick for real. <laughs> now, Taylor, give us some fucking asking idiots. Wait, you're not done? You don't want to go more into, like... Taylor. Taylor. What? Taylor, give us some asking idiots Taylor. right now, please. <sighs> I was going to say, y'all want to talk about the weekend performing at the Super Bowl? No. No? I didn't even watch it. <laughs> you didn't watch the Super Bowl at all? I watched the Super Bowl. I was barely watching fucking um, the weekend. And then that Bow Wow wants to be arrest- become a wrestler? Taylor. Okay. Shit, we don't um, care about next Okay, week. fine. All right, hold on. Hold on. All right. Taylor mm-hmm. just trying to stall. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor <laughs> trying to stall. I do wait. have some. Hold on. I'm, I'm waiting. Wait. Wait. Because it's don't, in you the don't story. Have any, yo. Okay, ready? Um, This is from. TJ Bottle Pockets. Do y'all think the vaccine is going to be a social VIP pass for private events? Man, get them antibodies and grow up. <laughs> That's all I got to say. Get some antibodies and grow up like the rest of us out here slanging antibodies like it's nothing. I don't think I don't think it's going to be no fucking whatever you said for VIP events. VIP events don't pay the fucking bills. What pays the bills is regular, everyday motherfucking people. Mm -hmm. You want that vaccine and everybody so they can get the world, you know, somewhat back to normal. That shit ain't gonna be for no VIP people. Hell no. It's not gonna be strictly for VIP folks. Why why you think that? Whoever sent that in. I I mean, you know why though? Because uh, one one artist said that he wants... Um, listeners to get vaccinated when attending his concert, like when once things open up. I forgot who it was. Though. Tell him to grow up too. Next question. <laughs> um, R underscore Maya ninety seven wants to know who has a shot of beating Joe Biden in the next presidential election. 
Joe Biden. Uh, Jeff Father, Bezos. Father, Mother Nature. Father Time. Yo, that's the, facts. The Grim Reaper. Yeah. Now, that's true. The new strain. What'd you call it? The new variant? The new COVID variant? Obama, uh, Biden's only doing one term, yo. You, you think, think he'll so? do the full term? I don't. I don't even think he's getting to the full term. I'll take bets on that. Now that. Now that is a bet. I'll take. I'll take. I'll take. Two. two I don't years. think. He's doing, I don't think he's doing the full term. Two years tops. You know what I mean, two years tops. I can. I can see him getting things in order. I can see them uh, maintaining control of the Senate and the House, and then him passing the buck. You know what I'm saying? Passing it on to 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 to, to the MVP. Okay. Madam Vice President. Okay. I can see that. Kamala. I, see that. I don't. I don't see. I don't, I don't see him doing four years. It don't. It don't. It's something about Joe Biden that really feels very placeholderish, bro. Mm. I can't. I can't quite put my finger on it. Like it feels very like temp jobish. Yeah. It don't feel like permanent pres El Presidente. Yeah, I agree you know with you, man. I think he's out of here a couple of years, and then Kamalita is gonna take over. Taylor, um, give us a couple more. So. Okay, uh, lifestyle underscore Mike wants to know what's something you want to see change in the podcast space. Something I want to see change in the podcast space: podcast behind paywalls. Ooh, podcast behind paywalls. Um, I, I just, I just don't, I don't think they work. You know, we we've seen it before. We saw it when a uh, couple, a few years ago, um, when Brilliant Idiots was being courted by a lot of companies that. Didn't work. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like quite a few companies, you know, were grabbing up podcasts and putting podcasts behind the paywalls. And, you know, you, you, you lose listenership because to me, when you put your podcast behind a paywall, it's like, um, and I, I don't, I don't, I don't knock anybody who does it, but it's like, it's like satellite radio. Satellite radio ha is cool and it has impact, but it, it'll never catch up to terrestrial radio. You know what I mean? Right. I think it's a, uh, it's something about, the podcast, it's something about this content being free for people. You know what I mean? And, it, and by the way, it's not free. We like we we invest in this and advertisers invest in us. So being that the advertisers invest in us, we're able to give the content to the people, you know, for, 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 for free. So, yeah, I, I would like to see less podcasts behind the paywall only because I think it's really it really stifles the growth. Of a lot of podcasts, I've seen a lot of podcasts go behind a paywall, and 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 lose a lot of listenership. And I just don't think you know this is something folks should be paying for. I think this is this is a great form of entertainment that you should be giving to the people for free. I think so. What was the question again? <laughs> What's something we want to see change in the podcast? Yeah. World? Oh, something you want to see change in the podcast? Well, I don't uh, agree with uh, everything Shaw said. Obviously, I have. A very successful Patreon, but we do that a not long... exclusively behind the paywall. Though. Oh, that's what you meant, exclusively. Yes, I would never go yeah. exclusively. I think you go exclusively, you remove yourself from the cultural conversation, and that's what I care about is being part of the conversation and being able to to dictate the conversation. So, like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't remove that connectivity to the to the people. Absolutely not. But I, I because because yeah. luminary, luminary, and endeavor that shit didn't work. Yeah, man. I mean, I knew that shit wasn't going to work. And that's what, yeah, I was very against yeah, you, doing that. You definitely said that. You was like, nah, we're not, we're not going yeah. exclusively behind a paywall. Nah, you know, you if you're giving go. people additional content like you do, because you, you're on Patreon. How long have you been on Patreon? Like four years? Yeah, man. Yeah, we've been on Patreon. No, no, I don't know how long. Two years or something like that? Maybe a year or something like that? Y'all bring years. in like what? Y'all bring in The numbers are public, right? Yeah, public, yeah. We got a... You bring, you bring, you bring yeah. in like 90 a month? Right. Yeah, yeah, we got over a million dollar Patreon, man. I think we're number. I think now we're number five in the world for Patreon. Wow. So we're like top man, five cool. biggest Patreons in the whole world. So it's uh, we've had an amazing, amazing success with it. And I think people should absolutely. I've been a big advocate for it, but I think you do it alongside your free episode, yes. so that you could and maintain. You don't, and both. you don't OD. Yes. You don't OD. You give them y'all give y'all give an episode of Flagrant, mm -hmm. and then y'all give. The uncensored episode on Patreon. Mm -hmm. Two a week. Yeah. Good. You keep people, you know, coming back, coming Hungry. back, coming back, coming back. Hungry. It's a, it's yeah. a taste. It's a taste. It's a taste. It's a taste. Exactly. Like, oh, y'all like this? 
come over here because we we cooking over here too. Yeah, that's all. I just don't I just don't think a podcast should be exclusively behind a paywall. If you're doing extra content, great. You know what I mean? Fine, charge for it. But to exclusively be behind a paywall, like like Luminary Luminary and the Devil was doing, nah. and I don't know if they're still doing that, but at the time they were, nah. They'll be out of business soon. Cool. Yeah, nah, that's no bueno. I don't think that's the move. I don't think that's the move. You got one more, Taylor. Give us one more quick one. Um. Am JD KDR. I want to know: Is it better to be hated for the right reasons or liked for the wrong reasons? Hated for the right reasons. Hundred percent. Hated for the right reasons. I have no problem being hated for anything I've, I've I've ever been hated for, because you know life is is a process, and you grow, and you learn, and you evolve. You gonna make mistakes. If you ain't making no mistakes, you ain't trying shit. Mm. You know what I'm saying? If, if 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 you're not if you if you're not if you're not bumping your head every now and then, like you really not really you're not rolling the dice the way that you should. Like all of this shit is a gamble. Yeah. Everything we fucking do every day is a goddamn gamble. And sometimes you're gonna win, and sometimes you're gonna lose. So I would much rather be hated for the right reasons than liked for the wrong reasons. Because motherfuckers that be liked. Like really, really like, they're probably lying to you, bro. They're probably telling you everything that you want to hear, how you want to hear it, just because they want that that amen corner. And you know, I tell you a million times, I, I if you if you live for the cheers, you're gonna die by the bulls. Mm. And boy, if I gave a fuck about those bulls, I'd be dead a long motherfucking time ago. <laughs> okay. <laughs> also, it like is- when you. What was the uh what was the initial thing? When you're basically hated for something that is the right reason, often history plays out to where you're loved for that exact thing you're hated for. You know, there's a lot of people mm. who hated Martin Luther King for what he stood up for, right? And now he's a beloved figure in not only American culture, but just globally. He's someone who's admired. So if you stand up for what you believe is the right thing, you're gonna get hate for that. But eventually right. that hate is going to turn to admiration. So I would always say that. Hated for the right reasons. Martin Luther King Jr. died with a 25% approval rating. Wow. I mean, that means he had a 75% disapproval rating. Mm. Think about that. Martin Luther King Jr. Ask your dad, Andrew, when Muhammad Ali was alive, they didn't love Muhammad Ali. Yep. You know what I mean? But guess what? He was hated for all the right reasons. And history is always kind to those kind of people. Facts. Always. Facts. All right. As always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. But if you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. Peace. All right, guys. Hello.